Hi everybody, welcome to your Puppet Pals tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to use the app Puppet Pals. So, the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and open the app. So I'm going to search for it here, and here it is. I'm going to touch on that, open it right up. And this is what it looks like when you open the app. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click Press to Start. So I'm going to touch that. And it allows me to choose up to eight actors. Notice at the top that it says you can add actor from photo. Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that later. But right now, it's giving me the option of some fairy tale characters only here. Okay? So I'm just going to um, choose a few of these fairy tale characters. Now that I've selected my characters, I'm going to touch the next button. Okay, now I have the option to choose up to five backdrops, but as you can see, I only have an option of three different ones here, or I could add a backdrop from a photo, and we'll talk about that in a little bit as well. So I'm going to select these two backdrops, and I'm going to touch next. Okay, so here's your stage. This is where your students will actually be recording their puppet show. And you can have them write a script ahead of time that you approve before they begin recording their puppet show. And the script could be about anything. It could be about any of your standards, any of your content area. It could be about governments of the Middle East. It could be about um, how different parts of a cell function. It could be about mood and tone in a particular story or a certain author or a, a particular piece of literature that the kids are reading or a partic particular event in history um, or how to do a certain math problem even. So uh, you could use Puppet Pals for all different kinds of things related to your content. Now, what you need to know for your kids for when they go to record their show after they've had their script approved is that anything that happens within this little box here is what actually goes in your show. Any actors that are over here on the stage um, will not be in the show. So if I want this, dino, this dragon to not be in the show, I actually have to pinch him down. He's not cooperating with me. Okay, pinch him down to make him smaller so that I can pull him completely off of the recording window. Um, so the first thing that I will do is decide which characters I want on stage here and put them inside of my little cave here. Now, I can obviously stretch them to make them bigger, pinch them to make them smaller, and if I double tap them, it makes them change direction. Just like that. Okay, so I'm going to start here with my little squirrel and my little fairy godmother character here. Now, you have tassels up here at the top, so if I pull the tassel down, it changes the background and then I could change it back just like that. Okay, so I have my script approved, I have my characters all set up, my dragon. I'm gonna actually start here in the grassy knoll, and so I'm gonna save my dragon for the cave a little bit later. And all I have to do is press the record button at the top here. Okay, so I'm recording my show, and everything that's going on in the window is what will be recorded. I like to tell my kids that when the characters talk, you might want to jiggle them a little bit like this so that we know who's talking. Hello there, little squirrel. Oh, yes. And I can fly away off the screen. And then the squirrel maybe gets smaller based on what the fairy godmother just did, and maybe the squirrel runs away. We can also pause the recording. So if now we want to go ahead and go to the next scene and set up our next scene after that, we can do that and then hit record again. Oh, bibbledy bobbity boo, little dragon. I'm going to shrink you down to size as well. Oh, no. Okay, and then we can um, touch the stop button when we are finished with our recording. Okay, so now we have some options. We can go back and play our recording, we can record more, or we can save what we have done. So the kids can go back and they can actually play. They can play their recording and make sure that it's exactly how they want it to be. And we can just hit the X button like that. Okay, we're happy with that, so we want to go ahead and save the show. So I'm going to touch the little disc with the download arrow. 
and now I can title my puppet show. I usually like to tell my kids to title it with my last name and then their period number and then their names and maybe whatever the particular show is about. Um, governments in the Middle East, we'll just say. Okay, so now I can save this. The reason I like this um, way of titling is so that if everybody in my PLC is uploading to the same YouTube channel, I can sort by my last name first and find my kids when I go into grade them. Um, I can sort by period number and see, you know, which period each, uh, each movie belongs to when I'm grading in my grade book. And then um, I can see which students have created this particular puppet show. So I'm going to click Save. Success! Our show was saved successfully. Would you like to view your save shows now? So I'm going to touch yes. And now I have um, a list of all my save shows that are saved within the app. So you can see that ours is down here at the bottom. It's 42 seconds long and it was created today. So I have two options. I can either export my puppet show and send it to my teacher because I'm ready for it to be graded or I can play it one more time just to make sure that everything's okay and that the audio worked and all of that. So we've already actually played it and we know that it works fine so we're going to go ahead and touch export and the Puppet Pals app will go ahead and sort of condense the video and get it ready to send out somewhere outside of the app. So it could be uploaded to a YouTube channel for the teacher, it could be emailed, it can even be sent by um, text message if you have those options available on the iPads that your students happen to be using. Success! Our video has been copied into our camera roll. So from our camera roll we can share it via text message, email, YouTube, or transfer it to the computer. So we're going to touch Super we're going to go ahead and go back to the uh, beginning of the app so that I can show you some things in a minute. But for right now, let's go into the camera roll. Now I'm going to show you how to go in your camera roll and um, how your students can go in their camera roll and send you their completed Puppet Pals movie. So you just touch camera roll. And you go into the camera roll here. Okay, and I'm going to touch this little icon down in the left hand corner that's a little like sheet of paper with an up arrow. I'm going to touch that and so now I have a couple of options so I can email it, I can send it to YouTube um, and that kind of thing. The other and so you can see that I have my my video up here selected in this top corner up here. Oops. And I can tell that because there's a little blue check mark there. So I'm going to go ahead and touch the YouTube button because I actually like my students to upload it to my class YouTube channel. And I have that channel set to private. So I'll have my students title it in the same way. Beard, fourth period, the names of the students that worked on the project, and a little bit about what that, that particular project was about. I will have them change this to education. and um, then I can have them change it to private and I have them upload it to uh, my, my Dropbox account that they have access to. So I give them the username and password and then they click publish which is up here in the top right hand corner and then it will go straight to my YouTube channel. So when I come home I don't have to bring anything with me. I can log on to my YouTube channel and I can go through and grade all of my students uh, Puppet Pals movies right there from YouTube. Um, another way that you can do it is to have your students bring their iPads over to you. You can plug in the white cord, plug it into your computer and go into the camera roll and drag and drop the video files onto your hard drive of your computer so that you can grade them on your computer. Um, but I like to have them online so that I can grade them from wherever I am and they're all in the cloud and I can set my YouTube channel to private um, so that all the students videos that are uploaded aren't just out there on the internet and I'm pretty much the only person that can go in and grade those videos. So, All right, and that is um, the characters in the background seemed a little bit limiting. So let me show you how to get more characters. I'm going to touch on the more characters button down here. 
Okay, and um, for $1.99, you can purchase the Director's Pass, which actually gives you access to all of these different characters and all of their backgrounds. Um, so let's see, Director's Pass, I'm going to touch that. So I'm going to touch, oh, it's $2.99. So I'm going to go ahead and touch buy because I definitely want that option. I'm going to confirm my payment information here. Okay, so it's now complete and I can go ahead and install all the different characters. So I have to actually click into each one and click install. And you can see in the top corner here I have Directors Pass All Access now. So I just want to install all of my characters. Now this also allows me the opportunity um, and allows the kids the opportunity to go out onto the internet and um, find their own pictures and backgrounds and use them those as their own puppets as well so this not only gives the students a whole lot more options in what they're doing but they can actually custom make their puppet show to the actual content um, that you want them showing mastery of as a history teacher I, I happen to like the political party ones so I'm going to go ahead and install all of these. Now the good news is, is that on the carts that we have at school, um, these, the director's pass has already been purchased and installed on all of the iPads for you. So you can just go into the Puppet Pals director's chair um, option. Okay, so there we go. Um, and then you'll have access, your kids will have access to all of the characters and backgrounds. Okay, so we're all installed. I have nothing but green check marks here, so I'm going to go back. Excellent. Now I'm going to press to start a new show again. So now as I scroll down, you can see I have a lot more character options this time. Okay, these are the three characters I picked before. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck those. Um, farm, monsters, pirates, political party, space, talk show hosts. Oh, the kids love that. Thanksgiving, war and peace, Dalai Lama, Gandhi, Wild West, and zombie attack. But what I'm going to show you this time, because we've already seen how to select characters and backgrounds and make a puppet show, this time I'm going to show you how to add an actor from a photo. So I'm going to um, click the plus sign here and the kids can actually take photos of themselves and insert themselves into a puppet show or they can choose an existing image. Now I have actually already gone out um, into an app called Haiku Deck and I have already collected a couple of images that I'm going to use for this demonstration but the kids could go out onto the internet and find some copyright free images. I have a folder filled of copyright free images so if you email me I'd be more than happy to send you the link to that. Um, so your kids can go through the folder and find copyright free images. Haiku Deck is a great option. That's an app that I will do a video tutorial about later. That one has all Creative Commons images in them that are already pre-cited on the image itself that you can use. Um, or you could risk it and go out and have them find images um, from Google or something like that. Um, and maybe you could have them cite uh, their images on a slide at the very end. So that's another idea. So I'm going to go ahead and click um, choose existing image because I've already collected images. I'm going to go into my camera roll and I am going to select um, this one. Oh, actually, that's one of my backgrounds. Let me try again. Choose existing image from my camera roll. OK, so I'm going to pick this image of Nelson Mandela. So I can move this down and I can actually cut around Nelson Mandela here. Okay, and I can accept or reject that option. I don't like that. Let me try again.
Okay, so we'll go with that. So now I have Nelson Mandela as one of my actors. I have another one that I want to pull from my camera roll as well. I am going to pick um, this image of F.W. de Klerk here and add him in as well. Oops, let me try again. You actually have to go into a, a circle. Okay, so I'm going to take him too. Um, did I have anybody else? Let me look. Oh, I have these two as well, so I like this one of F.W. de Klerk as well. Okay, so now I have my actors, and I'm going to click Next. Okay, so again, as you can see, as I scroll through, I have all these different background options. Now that I've added the director's pass into my app, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the two that I picked before. Ooh, the monsters one looks scary. So you can pick space or wherever you want your characters to be having their discussion. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to select your own backdrop. Again, I'm going to choose my own existing image. So I'm going to pick Nelson Mandela's um, prison cell here. And that's actually good. So I'm going to accept that. And where else can I have them talk? Um, we will have them talk here. Okay, so I'm going to click Next. I can change my background up here. So I'm going to pull him off, and I'm going to have Nelson Mandela in his prison cell here and so on Robben Island. So now I can go ahead and record um, my puppet show. Hello, my name is Nelson Mandela, and I spent 26 years in this prison cell on Robben Island because I was accused of high treason. Then one day, F.W. de Klerk came. Oh, hello, Nelson Mandela. And he got rid of apartheid in South Africa. We worked together, and yes, we worked together, and we ended up winning the Nobel Peace Prize. Okay, so now you can click Stop and record your your show, save the show, and send it to your teacher. Now, it is up to you as the teacher to include requirements in your student script to push it to higher level thinking. So some, some ideas might be um, using color, symbol, and image to represent concepts, and maybe ex having the students explain why this color represents this particular process in the cell or why this symbol represents this event in history and that kind of thing. So color symbol image is a great way to include higher order thinking skills. Um, sometimes I'll teach my students a metaphorical expression lesson where I ask them to include examples of compressed conflicts in their script or direct analogies or personal analogies and then they'll have to figure out a way um, in the content to include the personal analogy or the compressed conflict in their script and that kind of thing. So I hope that this tutorial was very helpful for you and now you know how your kids can make their own puppet shows and how they can send them to you and you know how they can collect their own backgrounds and puppets that they include in their puppet shows as well.